Welcome back. It is always a good day when I wake up, give thanks. And I know that today is a day that I have the privilege of stepping out in my little studio in San Diego and connecting you with another extraordinary human being. I just want to say a quick thanks to all the Facebook fans. Um, oh my gosh, I keep getting rising creator. And it's not because of what I'm doing. It's because you're sharing what I'm doing and things that are going on in my life. I'm just putting into a meme form and I'm putting it out there. And it's always, I would say always positive, but it's also thought provoking. So thank you to all of my Facebook people, Instagram starting to grow a little bit. Uh, and all the listeners of this podcast, all the countries now, I think we're up to 16 countries. Um, the downloads are really starting to happen. Uh, and you know, as well as I know that for anything to thrive and grow, um, it is really about us as a team. And we are doing this together because everything I do is with the intention to help you move forward on your path while you're here. Um, so that being said, I am so excited. I had her on last year and she is just uh, so pure and so joyous and so filled with the feelings of wanting to help you that you need to talk to her again. She needs to talk to you again. Her name is Sherry Gallant. She is literally leading the way in modern mediumship. And we're gonna find out what that means. Um, her line on her website, which is sherrygallant.com, is believe and you will receive. And boy, oh boy, do I believe that. Welcome to the show, Sherry, how are you? Thank you, Jane. I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me on again. It's such a great conversation. I just, uh, just, I just love what you're doing as well. And thank you to all your followers because you know what we're talking about and it's not so taboo anymore and everybody's starting to, to, to wake up and it's like, Oh, there's gotta be more to what's going on out there. And, and everybody, I just find it's just, you know, they always say like East meets West and it's, about medicine it's about everything and it's you know from from you know scientific to to like i had mentioned about east meets east, east meets west um i find that people are just looking alternative healing um and and mediumship and what you're doing and i don't even want to just say mediumship just believing and receiving is is you know <laughs> I, I I I find it hard when people are like, oh, you're a medium, because I find it's more than just mediumship. I find that it's healing. It's 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 being a grief counselor. It's being so many different things for for so many different people. Just being a friend and you know making people feel that they're not alone. And right. and that's what people need, especially nowadays with the world being in such turmoil and everything that's going on, just be positive. But I want to thank you for having me on as well. And uh, thank you to all your followers and just keep following Jane because it's, it's amazing that the guests that you have on, I, I follow you and I, I, I watch and I listen and it's just, it's really amazing. Aw, thank you. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. And the great thing is um, just the shows are finding me, the individuals are finding me and the dots are being connected. So I don't have to go and ask people to be on the show. They're actually calling me or sending me an email, which I love. It just makes my life a lot easier when things just happen naturally. Um, okay, so grief is huge. I mean, uh, every single one of us on the planet has experienced grief in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and we can grieve more than the physical loss of our family members and loved ones and friends. Let's talk about how you can use your gifts, your talents to connect with the other side, to bring peace and to bring healing and share, you don't have to share names, but if you could share a couple examples, that would be great. Absolutely. There's just, I could just go on and on and on with you. Um, there's so many different ways to, to, that this even relates to, because, you know, you have the person who is directly in front of you, who, who wants a reading from you, but it's, a, it's a ripple effect. I call it a ripple effect. And it's such a ripple effect because it just doesn't affect the person that's in front of you. Of course, they want to, 
you know, hear from a loved one, whether it's a family or a family member or a friend or somebody that they've, they've, they've lost, or if they're just curious, sometimes I just have people that are curious, but I always tell them to look outside the box as well, because you never know who's coming in. I record everything and I send them the recording afterwards because some things that come up, they're like, oh no, I get this so many times. And it's like, oh my gosh, I spoke to my husband and that message was his, his father and he was saying this and but you know when when you're in a home and you you know you're a mother you're you're a father or or whoever you are in this home when I say a ripple effect it affects every family member that's living under that roof so when somebody is sad and somebody is grieving um it, it the, the energy from you it's just a ripple effect and the energy goes through the whole house if mom's not happy nobody in the house is happy Sent okay so church. the old saying goes <laughs> right um yes. i've had you know where women you know they they i've had given them a reading and i've heard afterwards that like you know she let her husband listen to it her husband a non believer and just very like you know, scientific, so to speak. And it changed his whole life on how he is with his children now on how mm. he is the whole family is so happy, the energy is more positive, it goes through it affects everybody. Mm. And you really need to understand that like you feel when you walk into a room, like if you can feel who the Debbie Downer is. You just feel that negative energy coming from them, right? And I call them energy vampires, but sometimes they don't even know that they're even doing it. Right. And to help them, and there's so many different ways. I do events um, in theaters. And, you know, when there's a few hundred people in, in front of me and, you know, I do readings and, you know, whether it's 10, 12, 14, 15 readings that are, are, are that night that I give that night, I've gotten emails afterwards. Uh, for example, um, I had a gentleman, um, an email that was forwarded to me uh, that said, hi, you know, um, I was at your show. And he says, even though I didn't receive um, a reading personally from you, he said, what I experienced, what I had saw, the healing that went on in that theater was absolutely amazing. And he says, because of that, I have made a decision that I don't ever want my family to go through what I saw some of those families go through. And I want you to know that today I have admitted myself into a rehab center. Wow. Oof. So he That's was, beautiful. I just, I get goosebumps too. Yeah. So he was suffering from addictions and I'm assuming that somebody in the, um, in the theater, their child or loved one had overdosed from an addiction and mm. he saw what the family was going through. So not only did I help the family in that theater, in the mm -hmm. seating, his whole world is changing. Right. His whole family, a, a complete stranger. And I don't get a lot of feedback from people, but that really touched me and made me go, wow. Like when you say it's a ripple effect, it's a ripple effect. I've done um, interviews other where people will send a, a, a message, an email saying, you know, I heard this or I heard that interview with you or I saw this Um and I just, it's, it's what you've done. Just watching is healing to see and to, to say, okay, I'm not second guessing myself. What I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, what I'm hearing is truly real. Right. Let's talk about that right there, because you and I both have the same belief system about if you believe you receive mm -hmm. and i'm mm -hmm. always people are like how do i connect how did you connect with your mom how did you mm -hmm. write your book and i'm like you need to not only ask but mm -hmm. once you receive it you have to like oh oh okay cool thank you and mm -hmm. then let them know that you are receiving what is it that like what is your process for you to tune in and connect and have these spirits come in first of all First two two prong. When did you start receiving messages from the other side? And then mm -hmm. what is your process on how you open up to receive so that if anybody is out there listening and they want to tune in to their intuition mm -hmm. and learn how, um, Sherry is going to help you along that journey. Right. So what happens with me is so 
my whole life, I have always felt something. But, you know, when you're younger and it's like you just kind of like children see and sense spirit uh, very, very um, strongly. They haven't been influenced by the outside world yet. But then eventually what happens is we are and we kind of we don't want to be different. So we kind of set that aside because I don't want to be picked on. I don't want people to look at me and think that I'm weird or you know, and so we, we set it aside. Then we go through our teenage years and there's hormones and then boys and girls and all that kick in. And we kind of still set it aside. But what happens is when it we don't lose it, but something tragic, we have a spiritual reawakening, whether it's the passing of someone, which I think maybe in your case um, was with you whether it was some kind of an accident with me, it was a car accident. I was in a car accident and it changed my whole, it just opened me back up. It's not that I ever lost it, but it just opened the door to welcome it back in. And it was just, things just started happening stuff that I can't even explain. I ended up in a graveyard, like right beside the grave site of, um, my friend who passed away uh, that I named my son after. So in an area that I, 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 I don't frequent often. So, you know, if, if to get into a car accident and literally of all places, and I always said it felt like somebody had taken me out and put me back in once it was all over with. But wow. then after that, I just was more open and I was more. And so I just started to, I, I tried to look for a group. I found a group it's all an individual experience. It's, you know, I can guide you. I can help you. Um, I have, I've done workshops in the past and, and I have students that, you know, but I can only bring you so, so, so far. We all have mm. our own way. And with me, what happens is I usually meditate before. Sometimes I receive things, just things that I can't even explain in my normal life. And that's how I know it's not for me. Um, when, when I see something or I feel something and it just doesn't make sense to me, I know it's not for me. So either it's going to be for somebody like maybe for you or, or something coming up or an, uh, uh, an appointment, but there's always something, but I always say, you know, just let it flow. You have to set aside if it's something that there's no way you would have thought of. Or there's no way like you, it's from the past or, or anything, then it's something that you have to look more to it. Maybe it's the person that you just, you're going to meet up with for lunch. Maybe it's a message for them. Maybe it's a message for, um, you know, the next appointment, but it's going to be for somebody. I'm going to give you an example. So we were having problems with our air conditioning. And I remember I was like running into town and my husband's like, oh, I'm like, why aren't you like gone to work? He's like, oh, an air conditioning guy's coming um, to fix the air conditioning. But days before that, I had told him, I says, I don't know why, but Colin keeps popping in and he's been gone for, he was a friend of my husband's and he died in, I think around 1990. Um, and I just kept seeing him. So I just, you know, let it go. And that's, you know, you get to the point where it's like, okay, it'll work out on its own. I left, I went to the store, I come back and my husband says to me, do you know who that is downstairs? And I'm like, who? He says, that's Colin's brother. He's the air conditioning guy. <laughs> I was like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm like, now I know what's going on here. So I go mm -hmm. downstairs and I'm like, how do I say this? How do I like come up? So I'm just kind of walking around and I'm just like, hey, so I hear, you know, you're Colin's brother. And he's like, yep. And I'm like, well, what would you do if I told you that like he's with you in, in spirit? And he goes, oh, no doubt. He was completely open. So it was quite simple for me. Mm -hmm. But those are the things. Also, I don't usually do readings for family and friends because I feel like I know so much about them already. Uh, okay. But, but um, I had a friend. I have a friend. Um who's, I don't know, I would say middle seventies. And she says to me, you never do readings for me. And I says, well, I just know so much about you. And she says, but you don't know everything. And I was just like, okay, you know what? No, she's Irish. Good point. 
Okay, she's Irish. So I said to her, well, let me try and let me feel. So right away, instantly, I saw a young girl, indigenous. And I'm thinking, this is me thinking, okay, she's Irish. Mm -hmm. Why am I seeing this indigenous girl? Headband on, two long braids. I'm like, you know, the only thing I said, this is what I'm seeing. So I, I drive her home. She says, come into my house. I go into her house. And she's like, wait, right here. She comes and she hands me something. And it's she. I unravel it from a scarf. And it's a painting of an indigenous girl with a headband and two braids. <laughs> she says, this is the only thing I have of my mother-in-law's. <gasps> so, so yeah. Jay, how can yeah. you explain that? Well, you don't have to. And I was second yeah. guessing myself sure. because I'm like, she's Irish. Like, <laughs> right. Wow. That's great. So you don't know. And you know, it's just be open. What do you have to lose? You have everything to gain. Okay. You don't lose anything. So, you know, just be open and, you know, it's like anything people were like, well, you know, you don't believe in God. Don't tell me I don't believe in God. I believe in God. <laughs> like, what does God have to do with it? It's, it's, you know, show me God. Show me your loved one. Okay. Show me God. Right. I love that. Um, wow. This is so fun. Are you involved? I know you do events and I know they sell out every time you do events, big theaters with hundreds of people. Um, when you are doing an event and all mm -hmm. these people are sitting there, what is happening? Is it just that you are receiving a message and you just go, okay, you know, how does yeah, that so work what happens, with a crowd? Yeah. So what happens is Sometimes I'll feel what area it's coming from, like the energy. I'll feel like I, I'm being pulled. But a lot of times I explain to them at first. I say, listen, I said, you know, we all want that one person to come through. Sure. We all want that one person. I said, so, you know, there are some common names out there. So, you know, if I mention, I always use Margaret for an example, because, you know, I had a Margaret come through one time and there was like 30 hands put up in the audience. But I'm like, please, let's wait until there's something really significant. And what happened was with this one person, there was all kinds of hands put up, but they started to go down. And then what really nailed it was, she made me start singing the school bus driver song. <laughs> uh, speed up a little bit, hey, hey, bus driver, speed up a little bit. Everybody sat down except for one woman. And she wow. said, my mother, Margaret, was a school bus driver. Oh, that's great. That <laughs> so is hilarious. You so that? you're on stage and you are singing this school bus <gasps> song. I know my voice isn't very good. That's so, hilarious. Oh, and I also had, um, I had a woman, <laughs> um, I had a man come through another time and um, it was a rock song. It was, it was a rock song and I didn't even know who sang it. It was so embarrassing, but I was like singing this guitar and, and all of a sudden this <laughs> woman is like shoving her, her, her husband or whatever sitting beside and he stands up and I'm like, hi. And he's like, I love when the men get it. And then he's wow. like, I think, I don't know. I think that she kind of dragged me here. And I think that was for me because, you know, when you see men in the audience, most times it's because the wife made them come with them. <laughs> and it's actually funny because I know they'd rather be watching the football game or the hockey game, but whatever. So anyways, he tells me, so this was his dad and he was the lead singer for a tribute band for the song that I was singing. I think it was an album. Alice Cooper song and he's like I'm the lead singer and he goes I've been thinking about giving it up and he says you're telling me that my dad is telling me to keep going mm. so like those are the details mm -hmm. I'm not gonna just sit there and say your great grandma is here listen if your great grandma comes in that's gonna be wonderful right but it's it's got nothing to do with I want detail and this is what I tell them like please but I've been doing it so long now that I feel like it's a natural. I always say I'd rather talk to spirit than the outside world right now. <laughs> <laughs> and people will say, well, when you're out, don't they like come at you, like come at you? And I'm like, well, I kind of have a, this is how I put it. I have a deal with spirit. And my deal with spirit is when I'm out dancing with my friends or out having a dinner with my husband or having a good time, I said, that's my personal time. 
you allow me to have my personal time, I will always be available when I need to be. Wow. That's so a good this, deal. Is, this is this is a deal I have with spirit. Um, I don't go up to strangers. Um, that's their private personal space. Uh, some people just aren't ready um, to to have yeah, it. Absolutely. And, um, and and yeah, but it's I could go on and on like just the amazing things that have happened, and just like. Um, I'll give you another example. When I had first, it was hard to come out. I call it, I came out of the closet, so to speak. It was, it was, it was hard for me because my husband is a businessman. My, my son was, you know, going to university and um, I just didn't want, I didn't want it to affect them. Sure. But this is all in my own head. And I never told them what I was doing and that I was going to a practice circle that I was, I said, I'm going to yoga. I'm going to a meditation class. Then finally, somebody said to me like, Sherry, do you know the people that you can help? You're doing this for a reason. So I'm like, really? What do you think? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell them. So I told them and you know, Jane, they said, you know, mom, if you're happy, we're happy. And it was mm. the best answer that like all that worry and all that. And it was like, mom, if you're happy, we're happy. Mm. And now it's just, they're so used to me and right. it's, it's wonderful. Um, my mom got sick in 2010, uh, with leukemia and mm. she ended up passing, uh, three months later. And so my mom, there's me and I have three brothers. So, and then what happened was I kind of, you know, to take care of her, I was there and, but you also, so I have a background with, so I was a regulated acupuncturist. I've always done things. I was, you know, acupressure, reflexology, uh, herbs and, and aromatherapies. And I've always been into Eastern medicine, um, but it wasn't, I loved it, but I didn't love it. And it was like, I feel like all that brought me to where I am today, because a lot of that I also use, I give people aromatherapy ideas, I do, you know, it, it's it's a combination. And that's why everybody's like, you know, you should start calling yourself like the wellness medium, because, you know, it's, it's, you're all about wellness, you're all about just so many different things, you know, it's people are like, I just want you as like my buddy system. Like, I just want, like, I have, I have um, people who, you know, have me on like a WhatsApp that, that, you know, that I'm there for them when they're having a, a down day. I've done grief counseling courses. I've done, uh, let's talk about hospice. Um, I've, I, I have families that reach out to me to speak to uh, family members that are in hospice that are terrified um, of dying. And I had a, a young mom and I talked to her off and on for about a year. And she, when she passed, uh, she was in her late thirties and Ugh. she had a young son. And she, the husband sent me a message saying, um, you know, she wanted me to tell you that she wasn't afraid anymore. Mm, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. It's, you know, yeah. Jane, I, I just like, it just brings me like, like it's touching for me too, right? Because, you know, uh, somebody's life here on earth is ending, but there's a new beginning um, mm -hmm. on the other side. And with my mom, what makes me like I've had some amazing signs from my mom. Um, there was a time where I didn't hear from her for honestly, like two years, but my brothers were going through stuff and she knows I'm okay. Right. She knows I'm okay. They needed her more. Right. Um. So, so, so yeah, but it's just, it's, it's, you know, it, it really, it humbles me. Mm. It really does. Um, it really touches me to be able to help people. And I've had pets come through. I've had um, so many, you know, and, and like I was just going to say, what I, I try to explain to people is what makes me feel good is 
my mom, the reunion that she walked in on, her mother, her father, her siblings, the people she hasn't seen in so long, like that was a Johnny Cash party. That was a Freddie Fender <laughs> party, okay? <laughs> that was just a big party. And, you know, I'm going to walk in on that. And that's going to be eternal. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's so just great. amazing. So, so you know, it's not the end. Right. It's, 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 it's never the end. There's no such thing as goodbye. It's see mm -hmm. you later. Yeah, I love that. Sherry Gallant is my guest at sherrygallant.com. Believe and you will receive. Yes. And she's basically leading the way into modern mediumship. We have a couple more minutes. What is next for you or what is it that you want to do the most? Do you get the biggest thrill out of the events? Do you like the one-on-one -on -one readings? Um, are you writing? What are what are you doing next before we I'm all the show? over the map? I want to do everything. Okay. I want to just do everything to help as many people. As much as I love one-on-ones, I have to tell you the 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 events. I love doing events because I feel like I can heal a whole, like hundreds of people at once, not just the person getting the readings, mm -hmm. but the people around them as well to go, wow, it's just, it, it's just amazing. It's, 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 it is not morbid. We laugh, we cry, we, 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 we have friendships. We have people who've made long-term friendships, moms that have met moms whose, who, whose sons have um, taken their own lives and, and they've come together in the theater. And it's just like at intermission, there's like a few minute intermission and, and they come together and they understand and they become friends and then friends. And it's just like, it's, I call them my family. Mm. They're, they're, you know, they're my chosen family. They're the people that I, I love to have in my life. And I just feel like just so, I, so I love doing one-on-ones. And I love doing theaters, writing. I'd love to to write a uh, podcast. Uh, you know, I've had some opportunities uh, for 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 television, um, but I didn't feel like it was me. So, um, and it's not about being famous. My wait list right now is ridiculous as it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to do as many as I can. I don't do sessions from nine to five. It's not a job to me. I take my, I take it very seriously. When it feels like a job, I quit. Good for you. It's just something um, that is, of course, you know, people have to work and, and people have to make money because there are, you know, keep the lights on. But like I said, if it feels like a job, I didn't say I'm going to be a medium one day. I just happened. Right. And, um, and and that's it. But I just want to help as many people as I can. I have a bunch of events for 2024 that are just that's... going to be starting to, they can, people can go to my website, sherrygalant.com. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in Canada. I have, you know, people want me to come across Canada. People want me to come to the US. People want me to come to Europe. I've done sessions with people in South Africa. I've done sessions with people that, um, you know, people are like, well, you know, you've done sessions with actors and, and, and all these like famous people and you don't, you know, you should be putting it on your website. Why? Like, I don't need, I'm not, I don't need people to know who I do. It's very confidential. And that's another mm -hmm. thing. Good for you. There has to be mediumship etiquette. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you I'm the medium to the stars um, yeah. because they're people too. I don't care if you're a, a big movie star or you work at a coffee shop. Um, there's 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 no difference to me there. So I've had people tell me I have to get my priorities right because I need to put certain people at the top of the list. Uh, what is that? You know, I, I'm like, well, then you know what? They're going to get double wait time because I don't think I should have to put anybody. Nobody's no. a priority when Good it comes to grief. Good. Well, what I'm hearing is you're not seeking attention and no. you no. are, you are the real deal. And uh, I think I, that that's why it's very important to me too. I vet people, um, especially in the medium world, because you don't know. And whatever I put on the show, I personally 
back and believe in. And mm-hmm. I believe in you and you are absolutely the real deal. So it's sherrygallant.com. If you want to go to one of her events, you want to reach out and get on our waiting list for a one-on-one reading. Um, I am so excited that you agreed to come back on the show. And I think we should just have you come on whenever it's good for you and you want to share. I something. love this. Like it's just yeah. a chit chat. Like we don't, absolutely. you don't ask me, you know, you don't send me this list of what we're talking about. Heck it's, no. it's you know, we just having two friends having coffee and, and tea together. And, and that's what that's what I love about it. It's yeah. just coffee time, tea time. And if we can share it, we share it with everybody, Jane. And, and Absolutely. you know, thank you so much for having me. I'll be on here anytime. I love it. Thank you, Sherry. I really appreciate it. SherryGallant.com. Um, I got connected with her through Camille Dan. And uh, just has been such a nice friendship to have her. And I love what she posts too. So follow her on social media, not only follow the next room, but follow her social media because she really posts some beautiful things. And we're very aligned in that thought process that life just goes on and on and on and on. So thank you for listening to the next room. I appreciate you being here. I'll be back again next week. Uh, My shows post on Mondays. Um, So thank you very much for being part of the next room community. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you again very, very soon.